everyone, Marlin here. Welcome back to my Country Craft Corner. How in the world are you guys doing today? It is so good to see you again and thank you. As I always say, thank you so much for coming back by to see what I'm up to. And today I'm coming to you with somewhat of a new thing. And I'm fixing to show you in just a minute. I'm fixing to do my pit fairies finally came. Woohoo! Uh, the pit berries that I'm going to be using for my cozy corner to the right hand that sits to the right hand side of My TV credenza where we set the table that Chris painted that was cream to begin with and he painted it black First thing I'm going to do is take my phone off of the tripod here and we're going to walk over I've already put with Chris's help because I needed his help We've already wrapped lights around two pip two four foot pit berry garlands. I had ordered three. This is not a cheap corner. <laughs> you guys, I will fully admit that. These pit berry garlands were not on sale. can't remember how much they were. I want to say like anywhere from $17 to $20 a piece. So, and I did purchase three because I knew I'd need three. That said, if y'all will remember back to what I said in a video a couple videos ago, there are times when I will bite the bullet and go ahead and pay full price for something that I know is going to be used for a long time and is not going to go out of style in a long time and is becomes one of my staple pieces. Well, this Pitberry Garland is serving as just that, one of my staple pieces moving forward for this, uh, for this cozy corner. And I will take you over here and I will show you. And this Pitberry garland that I just attached to the ladder will not be removed until probably next Christmas when I do my Christmas decor. What I do moving forward is add to this garland. I don't remove it and put something else up. I just add to it. Anyway, I'll take you over there and I'll show you. And then I'm going to be, gonna, we're gonna come back here to my little hub here on my island and we are going to make up a lantern centerpiece. Let me grab the lantern. <clears throat> this is the lantern that Candace, my daughter, got me for Christmas. And this color of the lantern matches the rungs on the ladder. And that's why I decided to put it with that ladder. And I am going to be making a funky bow swag and we are going to be decorating up the, the inside of this too. And this will sit right on top of that black table. So, I'm excited to do this. I have been waiting, as y'all know, for a while to get this one done and to really work on this. I love doing new things. I love challenging myself. I love the challenge of doing a new thing. Although I'm nervous, I will say, because I don't ever want to disappoint myself or anybody else for that matter. So I'm hoping that I'm happy with this when I'm finished. Because this is kind of a different looking lantern than I'm used to working with. Doesn't mean I can't work with it, it's just a little different. So, but I'll get her done, I hope. So anyway, let me grab you guys <laughs> off of this tripod and we're gonna walk on over here to this corner and I'm gonna show you what we've done so far. And I'll show you where this lantern is gonna sit. And then we'll come back here and I'm gonna make two funky bows today, one a little larger for the lantern and a little one all in one color to, to and I'll show you where I'm gonna hang it in just a minute. So I'll be right back behind the camera. Okie dokie, here we go. Here's the corner that we've worked on. And as you can see, I've got two signs and these are the two signs that I took off of this back last August. The Pitberry garland that I was using for this last August was pretty pitiful. <laughs> it was an old one and I wanted something new now. So that's why I went ahead, like I said, and bit the bullet and bought these two. This is two tied together. I don't know where the middle section is. Somewhere on there, but tied together and then we have this anchored on with cable ties as you can see so that it's not going to slide up and down the ladder also we have this picture velcroed on and we've used a pipe cleaner as you can see right there on that rung to hold the picture on 
and the wooden stars are Velcroed on. We used Velcro. Wrapped a uh, 50 count light set with brown cord around this, brown cording. And I will give you a link to where we get our brown corded lights. And that's my grandma's sewing basket and that's my Virginia pillow. And I think that's gonna sit just like that. And then when I'm finished with that lantern, it's gonna sit right on top of this table. And I'm going to make a little funky bow all in one color and my in that same plaid right there. And I'm gonna hang it right there on this rung. So now you can picture where this lantern is going to go. Let's get started on that lantern. Be right back. Okie dokie, I'm back. And as you can see, I have one more length of pipberry here. And I am preparing to cut it pretty much in half, right at about two feet. And I have taken a cable tie and I've tied them together because you gotta be really careful when you're cutting pit berries because they do wrap them and then they wrap them with like, I almost wanna say grapevine, but like a, a twist tie covered in like wood looking material. I wish I could find some of that. As a matter of fact, I'm sure they have it somewhere. But anyway, I am going to cut this pitberry garland right behind that. As you can see, I've got it tied together just in case. I don't want it to come flying apart on me. And I'm going to use this part for up in the lantern swag with the funky bow. And I'm going to use the other part and wrap it with fairy lights. And we're going to use that as the base in the bottom of the lantern. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and cut. And it worked. It didn't come apart, so actually I might just leave that table cable tie on there. Now I'm gonna set this part aside because this is the part I'm gonna use on the top. And now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this bottom part in pip in uh, excuse me, in pip berries, <laughs> in fairy lights and get it into this, the bottom of this lantern. As you can see, I have all kinds of stuff sitting here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use. Candace had given me a bunch of stuff and I was gonna try to incorporate all that together, but when I put it all together, it just was like, I just can't do that. So I'm gonna use my fallback, you know, Gerbers along with the Pit Fairies. I'm going to put some of this this stuff is ancient. This is like a year old. I found this in the back of my uh, <laughs> linen closet. Had it in there, just, you know, help it smell good in there. And I thought, and it still smells pretty good, but I thought, how pretty would some of those things be in the bottom of this lantern to fill up this lantern a little bit in and around this, these pit berries. I am gonna try to incorporate some of the cotton in, in some way, Candace got me that. And, uh, and these feathers, she got me these feathers. So I thought I would try to incorporate the feathers and the cotton along with the pit berries and we'll see what I come up with. So anyway, here are my fairy lights. Chris helped me unfurl them because I'm telling you guys, when you guys get these, be really careful when you uh, unfurl them because they are not fun to they get stuck on everything and they get really intertwined with one another. So I am going to wrap them around this pit berry as best I can here. That's fine, just like that. There we go. Now, 
see if I can get this right. Chris said that I can trim these off if I go past the battery. In other words, the battery is back this way. Here's the end of the, of the lights over here. So if I go to one of the lights and go past This should work. Yay! And then I'm just going to discard the rest of these because I just don't need them. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is get these smushed into this lantern. Let me put my camera up a little. No rhyme or reason to this. I just kind of just literally smush them in there as best I can. And it just gives some interest. And I'll tell you the truth, I want to make a little seat. I want to make it look like a little seat because I'm going to put this little girl in here, I think, if she'll fit. So you're going to be able to see the lights. I don't think I'm going to need those. I think that would be just way too much in here. I'm going to lay this back just a second. Snug her into the pit berries. I'm actually going to pull some of them up and around her so that there are some lights in front of her. Make her look like she's sitting in the woods. <laughs> Make sure you can see something above her. And in front of her a little bit. She's holding a raggedy hand. There we go. Now we can see lights in front of her. So these are my three ribbons, the same three that I've been using throughout the rest of my decor here. So I'm going to cut three strips of each pattern at 26 inches long. And then I'm going to dovetail the ends of everything. Let me slow down here for a second and show you how I dovetail. And then I'm going to speed through the rest of the cutting process of this funky bow. I fold the ribbon lengthwise, pile them up, fold it lengthwise, go to the edge, and go to the corner, and cut up at an angle. I say this every time, but a lot of people also use, uh, excuse me, as my scissors, I might have to retire these scissors. <laughs> Hang on. A lot of people start at the fold and cut down, I don't. I start at the edge and cut up. So one more time, let me show you on this side and then we'll speed on through the cutting process. Pile them all up, fold it in half lengthwise, and go to the edge and the corner and cut up. And it helps when you have a decent pair of scissors. Oh my goodness, that was so much easier. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna speed through these two colors and I will be right back and we'll put together this bow. Hey 
Okie dokie, I'm back. Got my pipe cleaner ready to go. And now let's put together this funky bow. As you can see, I've laid the pieces out in the way in which I want to pick them up and add them to the bow, alternating between each, doing the same pattern, plaid, plain, berries, plaid, plain, berries, all the way through. I'm making a nine loop funky bow and I'm going to go ahead and fold it right in half like that and I'm going to go to the 10 on my board and make sure that I have a five inch loop. Pinch it together Then I'm going to go underneath and I'm going to twist that underneath tail so that the right side is up. Next. I, yeah, let me, first, let me say that I am not the inventor of the funky bow. A lady over there named Julie at Southern Charms Reefs is where I learned to do it. I'd like to give her a shout out. One of these days, I think I'll stop <laughs> doing that, but for now, I'm giving her a shout out. Uh, I, because I'm making a nine loop bow and it is an odd numbered bow, I've decided that I always like to alternate the loops. So this one went this direction. I turned this one in this direction. I still want to turn that back tail up so that the right side is facing up. Next. You don't have to worry that it's exactly in half, but it gives you just your basic design if you do. And you might end up cutting down some of these tails anyway. As I'm piling them into one another, you can see that right now they're beside one another, but eventually some will go on top and some will go on the bottom when I add them in. And this bow will eventually take up this whole section of my finger that I've got between my forefinger and my thumb. It'll fill that section right up as I add loops in. Always say use wired ribbon for your funky bows. This burlap is not this. The plane is not, and this in my case right here, but it is very stiff and holds its shape beautifully. So I am not complaining. It's working out just fine. I'm almost to the point where I can eyeball a five inch loop, but I do check it every time just to be sure. One more. There we go. Okay, then you add your pipe cleaner, or you take your pipe cleaner and you find the middle of your pipe cleaner. Put it over the top of your thumb and kind of lift your thumb if you can <laughs> and take it around to the back. Use the hand that you're holding the bow with. Whoa! Sorry. The bow shut with as resistance and pull tight and twist. We go. Funky bow. Stretch out my back. 
Y'all know me too well now. You know, when I've been crafting for a long time, like I have last week and now this week, my back likes to say, hello, Orlin, how are you doing? Just reminding you that I'm here. <laughs> so, but take time. I always like to say, take time to fluff up your bow loops. It can make all the difference in the world. And when you have wired ribbon like this, it really makes it easy to shape and mold your loops the way you want them to go. And there is that funky bow. Now I'm gonna real quickly make another one, only smaller, and just with the plaid. I'm going to only make these 20 inches long, each strip. So I'll be back when I cut 10 of these strips. Okie dokie, I don't need to line these up because it's all going to be the same color. But I do want to make sure that I have a five inch loop again, but as you can see, I'm only going to have like a five inch tail. So I had five inches at either end of that, ten inches in the middle, which gave me five inch loop with a five inch tail. Just a little bow, little funky bow. Now this time, since I have 10 pieces that I'm working with here, I'm going to do two in one direction, and then I'm going to do two in the other direction because I have even numbers. I don't know why, but it works out better that way. Especially when you have different colored ribbon that you're working with, but I just wanted one color on this. Just for something subtle, big and pretty, you know, for the space, but subtle in color. To the other direction now. And there we go, another funky bow, a little one, a littler one. And again, take the time to fluff up those, even if they are all the same color, fluff them up, spread out the tails. Get your whole fingers in there if you need to, just go all the way down to the pipe cleaner, you know, and Fluff them up from there. Be sure not to forget any loops. There are 10 of them here in this bow. There we go. Big, flouncy, funky bow. I love it. And that'll go right up in the right on the right hand rung of that ladder. Okay, I set that aside, and I'm going to bring this bow back over, and now I'm going to start... Okay, sorry about that. My phone turned off on me. More technical difficulties, only because it was my fault. I had not deleted it, deleted the videos off of it, so that was my fault. But anyway, I'm going to get started on this lantern swag now. And as you can see, I'm just kind of separating the pip berries out a little bit. And I'm going to nestle them right side down into the bat into the pipe cleaner that I closed the bow with. Wait a minute. First thing I want to do is to cut one length of this ribbon of this. I'm going to nestle that down first. And then I'm going to take the pip berries and I'm going to nestle them in too. I'm going to tie all of these together with the pipe cleaner. Do it as tightly as I can. 
I'm gonna leave the pipe cleaner on there. Now, bring the lantern over, and everything else I add, I'm gonna glue in. This is presenting me with a little issue. I'm gonna see if I can leave it up on this one. And see if I can get this tied on around this handle. Very tight, and I'm cinching it down underneath. Turn this around. Cinching it down underneath the handle, see? Can you see that when I'm doing it? Lift it up. And that way, I should, that should afford me the ability to manipulate this top part better. I'm making this again so that I can remove this entire swag if and when I want to put something different on this lantern. There we go. Well, can tell something already. We're going to remove it. <laughs> that didn't take long, did it? I don't like all of this at the top. So, all of this pit berry at the top. So, I'm going to move the entire pit berry strand down. Now, see? Alrighty, you guys. I, again, am having some technical difficulties. I am so sorry. I did pull this back off and I did add these feathers as you can see and I'm fixing to do a little bit of tweaking with this bow and then I'm going to come back and give you a closer look at everything with me talking with you uh, for with some final words and then we will go over to the cozy corner and get everything set into place and put everything together and hopefully it will all come together. I'm really happy about these feathers though. I really wanted to add an element of what Candace gave me and the feathers are just perfect. I'm not gonna add the cotton. I'm not sure if I'll use that cotton until, it is blingy cotton, so I'm not sure I'll use it maybe out in the, out in the uh, living room and dining room. We'll see what I come up with, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm gonna do a little bit of tweaking with the bow just to make it look a little bit better. I don't think I'm going to glue anything to the inside of it. I may do a bell, a little bell, or I might just leave it alone. And then remember this funky bow. So I'll go get everything into play. I'll be back with some final words here in just a minute in front of the camera. And then as I said, we'll walk back over there. So, and I'm really sorry about my technical difficulties. This is driving me nuts. I'm not sure what is going on with my phone. I might have to go get it diagnosed because <laughs> it's driving me a little crazy. It turns off on me, and I don't always look at the camera when I'm working here, so sometimes it turns off on me, and I obviously I didn't notice when I was putting, I was a woman with a purpose when I was putting the feathers back on. So anyway, I'll be right back for some final words in just a few minutes. Hey everyone, here I am, all finished, and I really didn't do too much else with it, to be honest with you guys. I just tweaked the bow a little bit. I didn't cut one tail, didn't cut down one tail. I tweaked the feathers just a little bit and I moved those pit berries back a little bit, which you can't really even tell. So I'm gonna pick this up and bring it towards you. And can I tell you, I haven't sent a picture to Candace yet. So I'm gonna do that right after I get this finished. I'm gonna take some pictures of it here on the island and then over in once I get it into its home. So hopefully she will be super happy with how it turned out too. And I am just, this will always hold a special
special place in my heart because I know she gave me the lantern and the feathers and I was able to utilize them. So here I go again. Good night. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so anyway, let me pick this up and bring it closer to you so you can see. I love the way the little bear is nestled in there with the pit berries coming across her belly too. I really like that. And you can see the, well, of course they turn off right at, when I get over, there we go. <laughs> you can see the fairy lights glowing in there and blinking. And then that big funky bow and the pit berries and the feathers on both sides. Super, super happy with it. I'm really glad that it worked out. Glad and relieved. These went a little crazy there. <laughs> of course, I'm still tweaking when I'm finished. There we go. All right, and don't forget this funky bow, this little one. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm gonna say goodbye here in front of the camera and then I'll do a little bit more of a, a commentary maybe over there or I might just set a little video to music at the end over there where you see everything put back together put together over there in that corner so next up we're going to move into the living room and dining room and start working with those lighter and airier colors in there I don't have a lot, whole lot to do in there but I do have a few things I have the dining room lantern centerpiece and I'm not sure what else we'll see and then we're going to move outside and I'll tell you the truth I am going to be decorating the outside for Valentine's Day I think the front porch uh, wagon decor anyway and the front porch front door wreath I think uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to make a new one I've got to go assess that cream wreath remember that big one I made last year I've got to go see I think I made that into my Easter wreath though so I may need to start from scratch but I did buy a few things from Michael's today just uh, so I might show you that in an upcoming video what I bought but or I might just show you when I go to make the wreath so I think I will be making a burlap wreath though so that's coming up too got a lot coming up yet still so all right so I'll just say thank y'all again for coming to join me thank you for putting up with my phone issues I don't know what's going on with that it's driving me a little crazy though <laughs> but I'll just say until next time y'all take good Good care. Bye-bye.